Today we're looking at another brewer in our Classics of Coffee series. This is the Bialetti Mocha Express. It is, I think, perhaps the most iconic coffee brewer ever made. You may disagree with me there. You can leave a comment down below telling me why and how I'm wrong, but I would say this is kind of it. This is shorthand for coffee in a whole bunch of situations. You could show me a silhouette of this coffee brewer from any angle, and I would know exactly which coffee brewer it was. The story of the Mocha Express, the real triumph of the Bialetti Coffee Company, is an interesting one. The invention of the device goes back to 1933, and if you read about it, there's a little bit of confusion over who the real inventor was. Alfonso Bialetti had started his aluminium company in 1919. He'd returned from an apprenticeship in France and come back home to Piedmont. So obviously his name goes on the patent, but you'll see a name which is Luigi Di Ponti. He, I think, was an inventor who worked for Bialetti, so I suspect the patent kind of would belong to both of them. Now, it's actually really difficult to find an original patent. You can find an image online, but you can't seemingly find the actual patent uh, from 1933. It may not actually have been filed at that point. Without seeing the original patent or the original sort of documentation of the invention, you can't necessarily be 100% sure what the actual innovations around the product were, but we have a pretty good idea. Now, if you go back a little bit, and, and for that you need an encyclopedia of coffee makers, I happen to have one just here. This is an incredible book. It's by Enrico Maltoni and Mauro Carli, and it documents coffee makers throughout history with stunning pictures. Now, you can see there were steam-powered espresso machines that predated the Mocha Express, but in many cases, if you look at the brewer from, say, Oikos from 1911, you can see that it's using sort of the steam pressure to drive hot water over the coffee, and it's still kind of producing like a little miniature pour over. The same is true if you look at this particular brewer, same sort of idea, electric, this one, but the original patent goes back to 1878. So, so using steam in a coffee maker was not necessarily particularly new. Seemingly the real innovation was stacking the brewer in such a way that you could use the power of steam to drive water through coffee instead of move it above coffee. This way you could also brew a little bit quicker, which was increasingly uh, a problem people wanted to solve, and thus the Mocha Express was born. And actually the original prototype didn't look quite like this, but it did look very similar. Now in 1945, uh, Alfonso's son Renato had returned from the German prison of war camps and had taken over the family business. Uh, and this change was transformational for the Bialetti company. Renato focused the company on the Mocha Express and soon turned it into an iconic Italian, in fact, global coffee brand. In the 1950s, the company hired a cartoonist to create the logo. He drew what became known as Lomino Coibafi, literally the man with the mustache, apparently based on Renato, which seems believable to me. Now in the 1950s, Renato did file some patents that you can see and you can find, and in it you see the change to this distinct shape that you see today. They'd widened the base here from the prototype to have better heat capture from the source underneath. You have the Bakelite handle in here, and the sort of shape of the top lid sort of handle too becomes kind of iconic as well. While I'm here, this seems like the perfect moment to talk about how this thing works if you are somehow unfamiliar with it. And I would say most people watching this video are familiar with it owing to the massive success of this brewer. Now, if you take it apart, you've really got three sections. You've got your base where you put your water in to start with. Actually, one of the innovations that came very early in the 1950s was this, the addition of a safety valve. Now, in a modern one, you can test this, you probably shouldn't test this though, they do open at about three bars of pressure. That would happen if, say, your filter had become clogged and water couldn't get through coffee and you don't want to create a small bomb, so any pressured vessel should have a safety valve. But that's it, it's a, it's a simple piece. Uh, Aluminium is pretty good at conducting heat through it. And then above it, you've got this, a kind of two in one. It's a funnel that allows water to be pressed up through uh, this way from the base of the unit by the steam around it. And then you've got your filter that holds coffee. So a little bit of a, a mesh to help distribute water through the coffee, Pop that on there, and then the filtration is done in this top section. You've got a gasket here that's one of the few parts that you may you know, occasionally need to change on this, and then a filter that the coffee sits against that would filter out any pieces of coffee that are sizable. It's a pretty small hole, so you should have a relatively clean cup, not dissimilar from espresso. In the top is where your coffee ends up when it's brewed, uh, and you would pour from here, drink, and enjoy. Now, there are three common misconceptions around this brewer that I do just quickly want to clear up. Firstly, there's the idea that actually letting a layer of coffee build up around it is a good thing. It, it's not. It's, it's old coffee. It's dirt. You can call it a patina and feel good about it, but it's dirt and it's not improving the taste of your coffee, and I would strongly recommend you clean it thoroughly every single time you use it. Secondly, 
you know, a lot of people say this makes something like espresso. It, it isn't espresso. It, it makes quite a different beverage on a kind of technical level. You don't brew at the high pressures of espresso. You don't grind as fine as espresso. You use a little bit more water in terms of your coffee to water ratio. Uh, and though it is a strong cup of coffee at the end of it, and it can be very textured and, and kind of intense, and it is metal filtered, which will give it that kind of thick mouthfeel that espresso often has, it doesn't have real true kind of crema, and it's a different drink, and it's nothing the worse for it. Espresso isn't the pinnacle of coffee brewing, it's just a brewing method. This makes, if you use it right, delicious coffee. Thirdly, there was a scare a little while ago about aluminium use in these kind of brewers relating to Alzheimer's. You'll see links or information on many Alzheimer's websites saying this isn't a thing, don't worry about it, but it has kind of persisted uh, as a kind of weird myth around the brewer. To say that the mocha pot has ingrained itself into Italian culture actually kind of feels like an understatement. One study showed that nine out of every 10 Italian households has one of these things. Bialetti's relentless marketing, coupled with the fact that this actually makes pretty good coffee, provided a very compelling alternative to going to the bar for a cup of espresso. Prodotto Bialetti. Watching these old Bialetti adverts is something of an experience. They were created for and broadcast in a show called Carousello. It was a kind of 10 minute variety show of advertising shown after the main evening news in Italy. And it was hugely popular, reaching an audience of up to 10 million. The messaging of the Mocker Express was pretty consistent. It seems easy. You need coffee, you need water, you need fire, but you also need care. And the Mocker Express, of course. Regardless of how we feel now watching them back, they were unquestionably hugely effective at the time. Bialetti manufactured and sold millions of these things. You see estimates online of them selling, over the years, between two and three hundred million Mocker Express. That's a lot of coffee brewers. On top of the two to three hundred million units sold by Bialetti, there are obviously pots sold by other companies, other brands. This one is made by Alessi, another iconic company, actually founded in the same town as Bialetti uh, around the same time. And I think one of the Bialettis at some point married one of the Alessis. Uh, but despite this, no one's really captured the mind share or the market share of Bialetti over the years. That said, Bialetti have had maybe a, a tough decade gone by. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that. I'll tell you how you can win a copy of the Coffee Makers book, uh, and I'll show you something super interesting for the next video in this series after a short ad for this video's sponsor, which is Squarespace. If you need a website or a domain, then I would recommend checking out Squarespace because you've probably got a little idea at the back of your brain. You can go to Squarespace, you can pick up the domain for it first, make sure you've got that, and then you can just sign up for a free trial and begin to build a website. And it's so easy to build a website with Squarespace. You can choose from one of their many beautiful templates that really kind of focus in on what you're trying to showcase. It might be a portfolio or a showcase of photography, or it might be a website for your cafe or your restaurant. And very soon, you'll find yourself with a beautiful website that looks great on every browser, on every device. All of that is taken care of. Once you publish, it's even easier. There's nothing to patch, upgrade, or install. Again, all of that is taken care of, and you can focus on updating the stuff that matters to you, new information, new pictures, new words. But as I always say, don't take my word for it. You can sign up down below for a free trial. You can build something. And at the end of that trial, when you're ready to launch, use code James Hoffman for 10% off any website or domain. Thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Back to the story of Bialetti. Now, in 1986, the company is sold to the Fiema Group. They make espresso machines. You might be familiar with Fiemas over the years, or any iconic machines too. But in 1993, they sell the brand on to uh, Rondine Italia. They make cookware, kitchenware. Ultimately, those two brands merge into uh, Bialetti Industries, which is the company that would ultimately go on to be traded on Italy's stock market. Sadly, in 2016, Renato Bialetti passed away at the age of 93. In accordance with Renato and his family's wishes, his ashes were interred not in a traditional urn, but in a large mocha pot. By 2018, the company finds itself in serious trouble. It had accrued over $70 million worth of debt, and it was struggling to continue to trade. It would declare bankruptcy and manage to get a near $40 million loan from an American hedge fund company called Sculptor. The company continues to trade, though I think it finds it a difficult market with a lot of competitions coming from things like pods in almost especially within Italy itself. I can't help but feel, though, that even if Bialetti as a company fails, this thing that they've created will live on. 
that if Bialetti goes away, the Mocha Express, be it this shape, this design, this idea, the coffee that it produces will last decades more. Now, in the past, I have made an ultimate mocha pot technique. It's a video I actually made with Chef Steps. It's been delightfully successful over on their channel, but it's time to look at it again. And for that, I have something pretty cool. This is very exciting. Now, I had a lot of help with this. In fact, this was manufactured, created by Gabor, who you might be familiar with from the Smart Espresso Profiler. Uh, and, and that's kind of a part of what this is. He has built a Frankenmocker. It has three temperature probes in and around it, sort of inside the brewer to track what's happening at different stages. We will have both a gauge and a Smart Espresso Profiler attached to it so that we can go deep on exploring exactly how this thing works to create a new ultimate technique. So a little bit like the AeroPress series, the second video in this series will be an understanding the mocha pot where we do a bunch of different experiments and see what we learn. And at the end of it, there'll also be one of these to give away. So keep your eye out for that. It'll be coming out very early in 2022. Now I did say you could also win a book. This thing is beautiful and I just so happen to have two copies so I thought I should give one of them away. You don't need to do much to enter, just click the link down in the description below. There's a very simple competition to enter, open to anyone and everyone. I'll leave a link to buy the book too. It is expensive. It's a small print run of a very niche thing, but it is so cool, so beautiful, and so interesting to look through. The, the evolution of coffee makers is a fascinating subject. And now I wanna hear from you down in the comments below. As I said at the start, if you can think of a more iconic coffee brewer, I wanna hear from you down in the comments below. Let me know what you think is more globally iconic than the Mocha Express. But also, tell me a story. I feel like this, more than any other brewer, is woven into people's family lives, into their memories. Tell me a story about mocha pot brewing in your household, in your life. We'd all love to hear from you down in the comments below. But for now, I'll say thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a great day.